Hello everyone and welcome to this week's scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a binary string back to an image file, which is usually the reverse. We usually convert the image into a binary uh, so that we can basically embed it inside of our script. But this time we're going to take the binary code and embed it into a file. And once we're done with it, we can do a lot of useful things like having uh, files appear out of nowhere and allow us to change files or images in a dockable script, which is not normally possible. And this will basically create the files wherever you decide to put them and allow you to, like I said, with the dockable script, change the files uh, or the images themselves, which normally is something that's not possible to do. So shout out to Chaz BC from the Discord group who recommended this. He had the idea of, well, if we can go from a regular image to a binary format, why can't we go the other way around? So I did some experimenting and came up with this solution. Before we get started, I do want to remind you down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can follow us on GitHub. Also, you can get the code for this there, which includes a dockable script Script, as well as this uh, binary conversion code to convert it to files. Follow us on GitHub and down in the description you can also follow us on Instagram for other live updates. Also make sure you join the Discord server. You can get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, submit tutorial ideas, and much more. And if you'd like to help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. So let's get started creating the script. You can basically just run this straight and extend script or an After Effects, whatever you choose. We're going to start off by creating a couple of binary images, which are just in this code here, which is basically a code representation of an image. Uh, normally, you can just create a user interface and include these files as the input for an image, and it works just the same as referencing a local file on your computer. Now, what I'm going to do is create an array called binary strings, and I'm going to basically shove all of the binary image code I have in here, all of the variables I'm going to put in here. So image one binary, image two binary, and image three binary. If you have more, you just go ahead and put all of them in here. And based on this loop here, or based on this array, we're going to loop through it. If you have more, just put all of the uh, variables inside of our binary strings array. We're going to now loop through this and automatically generate our files. So what we're going to do is create a for loop and we'll say for var i is equal to zero, i is less than our binary strings dot length increment i by one and this is how we're going to loop through each one of our binary image variables here and each time through we're going to create a file with uh, a png extension so uh, if you have a jpeg you could also do that as well but in my case i have png images which are this code here what i'm going to do is create a variable called test file which i'm going to populate with my file whenever i create it so i'm going to say so each time through this loop, I'm going to say our test file is equal to a file, which is going to be in the location, our desktop, and we're going to name the file, the iteration through uh, this loop we're at. So right here, we have one, two, and three. I'm going to add after desktop, I'm going to add I plus one, because it starts at zero, we want to start at one. So I plus one dot two string, just to make sure that's a string. And then we'll add JPEG or .png, depending on what your file is called. Then we'll grab our test file, and we're going to open it in order to write to it. Then the information we're going to write to it is part of our loop here. We're going to write binary strings i. That will write the current binary information down to the file. And then we also need to set up the encoding of our file. So we'll say test file dot encoding is equal to binary in caps and i'll put that in caps and then lastly i'll say test file dot close and now let's go ahead and run this and just like that we're getting a couple of files here but they are not valid and when we open them up they're not an image so i think we need to actually put the encoding before we write the information so that way it knows the incoming information is in binary format now if we go ahead and run this now we're creating png images from this code. So that's the basic premise of this video, but I'm going to go a little bit more in depth. So I have pasted here basically a simple uh, dockable UI, which currently has space for a main image, uh, and it also has a next button, which will theoretically cycle through our images. So I have my main image and my next button. Um, in my dockable script, I'm going to first set the first image to be uh, basically 
one of the first of our binary strings. Let's create a counter so that we can basically count through these. So I'll say binary counter is equal to zero. And then I'm going to set my image. So I'll say my panel dot grp dot main image. And I'm going to grab the image and set that equal to a new script UI dot new image. And the image we need to set that to, we haven't really defined well yet. Let's, instead of just saying test file, let's create an array where we store all of these created files. So before we basically set the images, I'm actually going to make one more array. We'll just call it images. Instead of just having a temporary test file, I want to actually store for however many of the images I have. I want to store all of those in an array. So I'm going to say images.push test file. And now I should have an array full of all of my images. And basically, I can now use my binary counter to count through all of my images. So what I'm going to do is grab my panel .grp .main image image. We're going to set the image to be a script UI dot new image. And we're going to set the image to be from our images array. And we're going to set it to be number binary counter which starts at zero. So if we run this, it should load image number one or image number zero. And now in order to cycle through them, we have our next button. So for that, I'm going to say my panel dot grp dot next button dot on click is equal to a function. And in this function, we're first going to uh, increment our binary counter. So binary counter plus plus. And then we're going to say if our binary counter is greater than our images dot length minus one. That means we've overflown past the number of files we have. We'll set the binary counter to zero. And then we'll just paste this image code again. And now we should have a working next button that will cycle through these images. One final bonus I want to do is have the ability to remove these files after they're done using the script so that they never know they're there uh, unless they look while they're using the script. So I'm going to say close button is equal to false for my window. And then I'm going to add a close button. So I'll say close button. I'm going to create a new button with a text called close. And now what we want to do is create an on click. We'll say my panel dot grp dot close button dot on click is equal to a function. The first thing we're going to do is loop through all of our images that we have and remove them. So I'll say for our i is equal to our images dot length minus one for i is greater than or equal to zero decrement i by one. And then we'll say images i dot remove that should remove each of those files. Uh, we can also maybe try and close the script if we want my panel dot close and now if we close it, it's going to remove those files and close our script at the same time as if they basically never had existed. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button. Down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out this code for yourself. Try it out and uh, create as many files and images as you want. Down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram and GitHub for updates on other code and other cool things. Also, make sure you join the Discord server where you can get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can support our YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time by becoming a member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.